welcome to part eight of the basic impetus how to play series and uh, in this one we're going to go into detail uh, on missile fire we're going to cover the sequence and how it's resolved the basics of shooting what it's all about what units can do it uh, we're going to cover choosing your targets fire arcs uh, priorities and visibility how that works uh, yeah so it should give you a good framework of how shooting works in basic impetus okay let's get right into shooting. it so what is it well, the first thing we need to do is take a look at our army lists. Now, if a unit is capable of missile attacks and launching missile fire on enemy units, it will have a weapon type that allows them to do that, and that'll be listed under the notes section of the army lists. For instance, it might list some kind of bow, like a longbow or a crossbow, slings, spears, things of that nature. Uh, then there's some units, which by their very nature, uh, automatically, that's their main way of attacking. An example would be artillery. Uh, those kind of units will be your missile units in the game. Now, when you activate a unit during your turn, if it has missile capability, in other words, it's able to shoot, you have several options available to you. One is to remain stationary and fire. Uh, the second would be to combine shooting with moving. You can do that. Those two actions can be combined. And you can fire before you move, or you can fire after you move. The choice is up to you. But, however, keep in mind that if there's any movement involved for your shooting attack, there is a minus one penalty on your damage rolls. So we need to remember that. Now, you need to also remember that if you decide to, to move after you fire, you have the option of moving after you fire. You're not forced to. Even though you took the penalty for movement on your fire, you don't have to follow your firing with actual movement. It's just an option. You basically tell your opponent, hey, I'd, I'd like to be able to move after I shoot. Take your penalty when you resolve your damage roll, and you can move afterwards after resolving your fire. Simple as that. Now, when it comes time to activate your unit and you want to shoot with them, how do we resolve the shooting? You know, there's basically three steps to the whole resolution process of shooting. Uh, the first one involves checking your target. That's where you measure the range and your visibility and your fire arcs and that kind of thing. And basically identify the target. Uh, the second thing would be to calculate and roll for your damage, which we covered prior. And it's basically take your VBU, modify it by missile weapon types and situational modifiers. Uh, and finally, the last thing we do is we roll those damage dice and follow that with cohesion test on the target unit if it takes any damage from it. So that's the sequence at its basis. The first thing we want to do is look through the sequence a step at a time. And first up would be check your target. And what is that? That's basically where you measure your range, check your firing arc, and basically look for target units that your unit can fire at. Now the first of these is the firing arc. Now, the first thing we have to keep in mind with firing arc is that in basic impetus, all ranges and visibility and arcs are measured from an edge of the unit. And normally, this is the front edge of the unit. Uh, but the exception to this would be units that have a 360 degree fire arc. They can actually shoot from a side or a rear edge as well as the front edge of the unit. Now, let's take a look at the arcs. First up, we have 45 degree arcs. Now these are restricted to missile troops, skirmishers, medium cavalry that are armed with missile weapons, and all your artillery. Their fire arc is basically 45 degrees to the front. Now the 360 degrees belongs to light cavalry, uh, war chariots, and Wagenberg. Now those guys can shoot from any of the four edges of the base. So if we look at some examples here, there's a unit of light cavalry, again on the bright green base, and they can choose to shoot at any of those three targets surrounding them. Uh, the side edge or the front edge, base or the other side edge, can be the actual edge they measure their range and check their fire arcs from when it comes to actually determining which units they will fire at. Now in the case of this missile troop unit, their fire arc is 45 degrees, again to the front. And the way we check this is simply to lay our tape measure down or rod or whatever we have and see what that arc is. Now some people like to use little templates or specially made rods for that, like for instance this little device here which shows 45 degree angles. Now if I, if I was using this in the game, and I do sometimes, I basically lay that along the side edge of the base, 
to find that 45 degree arc, which would be like that. So that's a useful tool. So yeah, some people like to use things like this, but it's not necessary. Now once we've identified the units that are within the firing arc of the shooters, it's time to see if they can actually be seen. So let's look at our example in front of us. We have some missile troops who shoot 45 degrees from their front edge. And if we double check the arc, we can see that both those cavalry units are within the firing arc. They're both eligible because they're within the firing arc. But as far as visibility goes, let's see how that works. Now I have to measure from the two corners of the front edge of the unit, the shooter, because that is the edge they're shooting from. And I have to measure to two corners of the target unit. Well, let's look at this unit first. It would be corner to corner here, which is obviously blocked. Now these two corners are open, but doesn't matter. This whole area in between here that we measured is what we're looking at. And we can see right away that this woods is blocking it. It counts as an obstacle and blocks uh, sight to this unit. So this unit cannot be seen. So it's not a target. Now this unit up here on the left of the first one, we do the same process. Two front corners of the firing edge, which is the front for these guys. So there to there, no blockage from the woods. And from this corner to this corner, same thing. So their area is right here and there's nothing blocking it. So this cavalry unit immediately is seen. So it's an eligible target. Now let's take a look at our troops with 360 degree firing arc. Uh, in this case, our light cavalry once again. Now again, they're able to shoot from all four of the edges, whichever one they choose uh, that has an enemy unit in it. Uh, in the case here, we could see our light cavalry in the middle and they're surrounded by four enemy units as well as some blocking terrain. So let's see what happens here. Let's look at this unit first. We can see right away that there's nothing blocking these this area. So it's something you really don't have to measure. If they fire from the rear edge, they can measure that corner to that corner and this corner to that corner. And there's nothing blocking. So that is a visible target. Uh, this unit over here, on the other hand, we would have to measure from these two corners of this side edge of the shooting unit to these two corners of the target unit. And you can see right away that this over here, the corner to corner, is blocked by this woods. So this unit could not be seen. It's not visible. So it's therefore not an eligible target. Now this unit up here, you could see right away that the best edge to shoot from would be the front. And if we measure like this, it's blocked. But if we measure this corner to this corner, and then this corner to this corner, it's not blocked. So this becomes a visible target and can be shot at. Now, one last example would be up here. We've got a unit of skirmishers, enemy skirmishers in a built-up area. As you can see, half of them, more than half, is within this built-up area. So, they're kind of stashed away. Uh, firing from their front edge, I could measure from this corner to that corner, and this corner to that corner. So this becomes an eligible target as well. Even though it's in a built-up area, it can be shot at. One more thing we need to keep in mind regarding visibility is uh, when troops, either the target or the shooter, is actually in uh, a woods. Uh, the rules state that if a target or shooter that's in the woods <coughs> is within three units, or in my case three centimeters, uh, from the edge of that wood, they can be seen. So if we look at our example down here, I have a heavy foot unit that's deployed within the woods. Uh, and my shooting unit over here, the missile troops, they are outside the woods. And if we measure our range, again, it's center to center, uh, we'll see that I am about eight and a half centimeters away. Now, we have to pay attention also to this distance from here to the edge of the woods, which in this case is less than three centimeters. So this unit is less than three centimeters from the edge of this woods and also within range of the shooting unit. So it is a visible target. You need to keep that in mind. Uh, it also applies, if we look over here, to when both units are in the same woods. In this case, if this unit of skirmishers wanted to shoot at these guys, if they are within three centimeters, and we check our range here, point to point, center to center, we see that they are less than three centimeters apart in the same woods, which means they can see each other and therefore shoot at one another. Now while we're on the subject of visibility, uh, it's probably a good time to go into what's termed indirect fire. Uh, now this is basically 
a term used to describe weapons that are firing over friendly troops to hit the target unit, basically arced fire. Now the only missile weapons that are capable of this kind of fire is uh, things like bows, in fact all your bows, slings, javelins, things that have the capability of arcing their fire in the air. Uh, it does not apply to direct fire type weapons like um, muskets and uh, arquebuses, uh, things of that nature, crossbows, they can't use indirect fire. Uh, if, if this was a unit of crossbows and this unit was between the target and the shooter, I could not shoot them. I could not use indirect fire to shoot over my friendly troops to hit them. Now, what are the requirements to shoot over a friendly unit? Well, the only requirement is that the unit intervening, the friendly unit intervening, has to be closer to the shooter than to the target. And it's a simple matter of just measuring. In this case, it's three centimeters from the target, and it is seven centimeters from the shooter. So this would prevent any indirect fire on this unit. Now, if he was down here, I would be able to arc my fire and shoot at this unit of cavalry, because the intervening friendly unit is closer to me, the shooter. Now, of course, when you make your roll to hit, there is a minus two penalty if you're using indirect fire. So let's keep that in mind. And also, regarding artillery, uh, basically things like catapults and trebuchets, artillery pieces that uh, basically throw their projectiles, uh, they also use indirect fire. However, they use the Class C artillery section of the firing table. Uh, and we'll go into that when we go into the actual modifiers, but they're able to do that and they do not suffer the minus two penalty normally associated with indirect fire. So we'll keep that in mind. Now the final thing we need to look at regarding checking your target is what's known as target priority. Now there's a couple concepts we have to understand from the get-go before we get into the details of determining what units are our target priority. Uh, in the first of those, understanding how we actually measure range in the game between shooting units and their targets. Now according to the rules we measure from the center front edge of the firing unit to the center of the closest edge of the target unit. So in this case here if I was targeting them I would measure center to center and I would see that's about a little less than nine centimeters away. If this unit was the target I'd do the same thing. It would be center to center in that case about eight centimeters. Uh, if this unit was like this, I could see right away that the closest edge of the target unit would probably be this side. So I would measure to the center of that one, and that would be closer, in this case about 7 centimeters, than if I measured to this edge, which is about eight and a half, nine 9 centimeters. So this would become the edge I measured to, and again, it's the center point of that edge. Now, the second thing we need to look at is what defines the front of a shooting unit. Now, just like in zone of control, every unit has a zone, uh, a corridor basically, that extends their front base edge. And if we lay down these two tape measures, we can clearly see that front zone of the shooting unit. So we need to understand this. Units in this zone are going to become your primary targets. The more of them in that zone, the more likely they will be the priority targets. So we need to pay attention to this frontal area. If this unit, it's in there by a corner, but if it was back here, it's not in the front of this shooting unit. So that's how it works. We need to keep that in mind. Now, what are the priorities? Well, your first priority, the first target type the unit of shooters will aim at, take shots at, will be the enemy unit uh, closest to the unit's front at short range. Now, what is that? Short range is 10 units. So first of all, let's see, both these units are within short range in this case 10 units. And we also know that both are within that frontal zone of the shooting unit. So they're both in the front of this unit and both are at short range. So which one becomes the primary target? Well the closest unit in the front. That means the unit who engages the front the most becomes the primary target. In other words this unit only engages by that much, a little corner of its base. This one engages this much of the enemy unit shooter's front. So this one is more in the area. So this becomes the primary target. In another, it's another way of saying that the unit that occupies more of this area, 
with its base becomes the primary target. Now if this unit wasn't here, let's say he's further back or not in the fire arc, uh, the first priority would be him and obviously he's at close range and he occupies more of the front so he would he would be the target. Now if both these units were out of that close range distance which again is 10 centimeters and we can double check that we can see both units are no longer at short range we have to look at the second priority and the second priority falls to the closest enemy unit within fire arc again if we check our fire arc it's 45 in this case both units are in my fire arc. Now the closest of these two units becomes the next primary target. So let's measure our distance here. That one's at 12 centimeters. This one is at about 13. So this now becomes the primary target of our shooting. If this unit was a little closer, say to there, but still out of short range, so he's at about 11 centimeters. He would be closer than this guy, so he would become the primary target. Now let's take a look at units with a 360 degree fire arc. Now if you remember, one of the big advantages of troops with a 360 degree arc is that they can choose which edge they will fire from prior to actually resolving the shooting. Uh, now basically what this means is that if I choose an edge like this side edge or this rear edge, this edge now is, becomes the firing edge and is treated just like as if it was a new fi front edge for firing purposes. So I would measure my visibility, my range, my fire arcs, and my priorities uh, based on this new edge. So let's look at this example. If I'm firing from this side edge, here's my 45 degree angle now. I could see both units are in there. I could see that both units are within short range and when I check my frontal zone, uh, it will look like this. And I can see this unit isn't even in the front anymore. But this unit is. So this unit would become the first primary target. Now, if ne neither of these units was at short distance, uh, the primary target falls to the number two choice, which is any closest unit within fire arc. Now again, this would be my 45 degree fire arc out the side. And I would see both units are in the arc, and the closest one of these two, measured center to center, that's at about 11, would become the primary target. That's at about 12. So this unit would become the primary target in this case. Okay, folks, that pretty much covers Part 8. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, gives us a good start with missile fire. Uh, part 9, we'll go into detail with the actual modifiers, the firing table, the general modifiers, and we'll get into a detail with an actual example of shooting uh, and carry it through with uh, cohesion tests and damage rolls, the whole shebang. So stay tuned for that. Well, I hope it was informative. I hope you learned something, and I hope I entertained you to some degree anyway. Uh, okay, we'll see you in Part 9 next, folks.